Introduction The part of a plant that attracts us to it is flowers. Flowers in full bloom make us cheerful. They make our lives colorful. Just as there is a variety of flowers, there is a wide array of leaves. It is a sheer delight to watch leaves and flowers of different shapes and sizes. In this lesson, we will learn about leaves and flowers in great detail. A leaf is a flat, green structure attached to a node on the stem. The stalk by which a leaf is attached to the stem is called the petiole. The thin, flat and white part of the leaf is called lamina. The lamina is green in color. The thick line present in the middle of a leaf is called the midrib. The thin lines branching from the midrib are the veins. The arrangement of veins on a leaf is called venation. When veins appear to branch from the midrib, the venation is called reticulated venation. When the veins run parallel to one another, the venation is termed as parallel venation. This type of venation is generally found in the leaf of grass. An important function of the leaf is to keep the plant cool in summers. This is accomplished through transpiration. Transpiration is the process by which water vapor evaporates from the leaves and stems of a plant into the atmosphere. Small pores called the stomata on the underside of the leaves facilitate transpiration. Like animals and human beings, plants also require food for their survival. However, unlike animals and human beings, they can make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. This process takes place in the leaves of the plant. In this process, the leaves of a plant use the energy from the sunlight to convert the carbon dioxide absorbed from the air and the water absorbed from the soil into glucose. The food prepared by leaves is then transported to the different parts of the plant. You just learnt that leaves make their food with the help of photosynthesis. The tiny structures on leaf inside which photosynthesis takes place are known as chloroplasts. Due to their role in food production, they are also known as food factories. Chloroplasts are green in color. They get their color from a pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll helps leaves prepare food. We see flowers all around us, in balconies, in lawns, in parks, in sidewalks. Flowers of varied hues and colors fill our hearts with happiness. Flowers, irrespective of their sizes and shapes, are refreshing. Big or small, red or blue, all flowers have the same structure. The outer part of the flower is known as calyx. It consists of green leaf-like sepals. The inner part of the flower is called corolla. It comprises the petals. Different flowers have petals of different colors. Petals attract pollinator to its flower. The male part of the flower comprises one or more stamens. Each stamen is a stalked structure. The stalk is called the filament. Atop the filament are two sacs containing pollen. These sacs are known as 
anthers. The female part of the flower is called the pistil. It is the innermost part of the flower. The pistil has three parts, stigma, style and ovary. The stigma is the sticky surface at the top of the pistil. It traps and holds the pollen. The style is a tube-like structure that holds up the stigma. The style leads down to the ovary that contains the ovules. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. The stalk by which a leaf is attached to the stem is called the petiole. The thin, flat and white part of the leaf is called lamina. Photosynthesis is the process by which the leaves of a plant use energy from the sunlight to convert the carbon dioxide from the air and the water absorbed from the soil into glucose. Transpiration is the process by which water vapor evaporates from the leaves and stems of a plant into the atmosphere. The outer part of the flower is known as calyx. The inner part of the flower is called corolla. The male part of the flower is called the stamen. The female part of the flower is called the pistil.